Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back, and if you are new, thanks so much for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. As many of you know, I am following the Giller Prize. The Giller is Canada's biggest literary prize, which highlights the best of the best of Canadian fiction. And I had done a video sharing 12 of my hopefuls for the long list, and the long list was announced on September the 6th, and yes, I got up early and I watched it live as last year's winner, Omar el named the long-listed authors and their books. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the long list and I will share some of my thoughts and my reactions. Uh, there were times that I cheered because I was very excited with the picks, and there were also a few surprises along the way. First, I want to share what the five members of the jury shared about uh, this year's long list. They said this, As the world royals and rolls on in this strange new decade, the 2022 Scotiabank Giller Prize jury can report that Canadian fiction is only becoming more bountiful, energetic, meaningful, funny, and moving. The jury's discussions and debates throughout the year were nuanced and spirited, but most of all, we were continuously in awe of the cornucopia presented to us. We are proud to showcase a long list of 14 outstanding titles that are sweeping in scope, touch all corners of life, and which provide pleasure and stimulation, as well as urgency and depth. To the nominated authors, it is our delight and honor to say congratulations and thank you. So I thought that that was very nice. And I like that it seems they have chosen a long list that reflects a range of stories and voices. So I'm going to start with a couple of surprises. The first surprise is that they chose 14 books for the long list. So this is exciting because it's usually 12. So having a couple extra books is fantastic. And if I had chosen 14 hopefuls instead of 12, I think I would have had at least one, if not two more books, correct. Um, and then a second surprise is that no graphic novels made the long list. So if you watched my hopefuls list, then you know that I talked about two graphic novels that I thought had at least some potential, and um, I chose one, thinking that at least one graphic novel uh, would go through to the to the long list, and I was wrong. So next, let's look at the short stories. So I had thought that there were, uh, I still think that there are a lot of contenders for short story collections, and I chose four for my hopefuls list, and I still think that there are some very strong collections out there, but only two short stories actually made the uh, long list. So Kim Fu for her short story collection, Lesser Known Monsters of the 21st Century, published by Coach House Books. And this would have been on my hopefuls if I had done 14 books. So I did cheer when I saw this come up on the screen. Um, I had ended up choosing another book over this one, and I think it was because I thought novellas might make it, but I am thrilled to see this on the list. And then the second short story collection was a surprise for me, uh, Rai Hage, for his short story collection, Stray Dogs, uh, published by Knopf Canada, an imprint of Penguin Random House. And this was not on my radar, really, but I'm willing to give it a try for sure. And I know a couple of people commented on my videos saying that they were hoping that this went through, so I'm excited to learn more. In my hopefuls, um, I talked about authors who had been nominated in the past, and I don't think that any of the authors nominated this year have actually been nominated in the past. So if that's true, and that might not be the case, but if it's true, then this really is a list highlighting newer and lesser known authors. So when it comes to debut novels, I was correct with Billy Ray Belcourt, for his novel, A Minor Chorus. This is published by Hamish Hamilton Canada, and that is an imprint of Penguin Random House Canada. 
I did a cheer when this book was mentioned and I think that I would have been quite disappointed if this hadn't made the long list uh, because if I were to bridge if I were to predict a short list right now I would include this book so we will see if that changes once I read it I also cheered when this next book was mentioned uh, because I put it on my hopefuls list as well and that is Tsering Yangzom Lama for her novel We Measure the Earth with Our Bodies. Uh, this is published by McClellan and Stewart, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House Canada. Um, I am so excited to read this book. So the next debut novel is the second book that I would have added if I had done 14 hopefuls. Um, I talked about it in my hopefuls video, and that is Connor Kerr for his novel Avenue of Champions. And this is published by Nightwood Editions. And I am so pleased to see that this has made the long list um, because it was heartbreaking for me to cut this. And I think that I had chosen the Theory of Crows over this one. And I am sad that Theory of Crows uh, by David Robertson didn't make the long list. I thought for sure that it would, um, but I will definitely be reading it you know, at some point. Another long listed book that I took off my hopefuls list a little bit closer to the end was Brian Thomas Isaac for his debut novel, All the Quiet Places. This is published by Touchwood Editions. And this book was long listed for Canada Reads earlier this year. So I knew about it and I've heard some really great things about it. So this is another one that I'm happy to see it long listed and I will definitely try and read it. So next up are books that were on my radar, but for whatever reason, didn't make it to my hopefuls list. Uh, so this next book, I was so pleased when I saw it on the long list. And that is Suzette Mayer for her novel, The Sleeping Car Porter. This is published by Coach House Books. And I didn't choose this for my hopefuls, but it was definitely on my radar. And I had talked about it in uh, one of my videos that I did about my most anticipated books being published before the end of the year. So this is something I wanted to get my hands on and this is an added bonus for me because I'm very interested in this book and now I have an excuse to pick it up. Next is Sheila Hetty for her novel Pure Color, published by Knopf Canada, an imprint of Penguin Random House Canada. And this book made it quite far in my process as well. I had seen it many times and I think when I cut it from my list, I did so because it seems to kind of lean towards the philosophical side and I wasn't sure if that would make it to the long list or not. So now that I know that it's made it to the long list, um, I really look forward to reading it. Fawn Parker for her novel, What We Both Know, published by McClelland and Stewart. Um, this is also an imprint of Penguin Random House Canada. Um, and I actually, I thought I owned this book, um, but it is on my radar. And I think it made it through several stages while I narrowed down my hopefuls list. I am interested in this book as it is compared to uh, My Dark Vanessa, which I loved. But I think I didn't put it through because it was similar to some of the short story collections that I had chosen uh, to put on my hopefuls list. But since those didn't make the list, it kind of makes sense to me that this would. So I'm looking forward to this one too. Andre Narbon for his novel Lucian and Olivia, uh, published by Black Moss Press. And when I looked back, I had highlighted this book. So what does that mean that I highlighted it? Um, it means that I looked at this book more than just a couple times. I think what it came down to for me was that I had a hard time uh, getting too much information for this. Um, it was hard to find information about this book. That being said, the cover is intriguing and the author and I, it turns out, have similar stomping grounds. So I look forward to, to learning more um, about this novel. Antoine Wilson for his novel Mouth to Mouth, published by Simon & Schuster Canada. 
So this was on my radar. <laughs> it's been gaining traction because it was one of Barack Obama's uh, favorite books of the year. So I was aware of it um, because of that, but this one didn't stick with me. So I hope that it will be a good one and um, hopefully a new favorite as well. Dimitri Nasralla for his novel Hotline, published by oh. Vehicule Press. So I'm not going to lie, this cover did nothing for me. I do remember reading the blurb and thinking that it sounded nostalgic uh, because the book is described as a love letter to the 80s. So that did have my attention, but I guess it just wasn't enough to stick with me. So I'm hoping to revisit some of my childhood uh, with this one when I do get to it. Next is Andre Forget for his novel In the City of Pigs, published by Dundurn Press. And this was not on my radar at all. I had never heard of this author before, and I had no notes. So for some reason, this did not capture my attention and it didn't go very far in my process. But that being said, um, I have since entered the Goodreads giveaway for this novel, and I hope that Andre Forget will become a new favorite author and not be forgotten. And finally, the biggest surprise for me was Nurnega for her novel, If an Egyptian Can Speak English, published by Grey Wolf Press. And why was this such a big surprise? Well, I looked at over 230 books <laughs> that were eligible for the Giller, and this wasn't on that list. So I felt a bit blindsided by this one. Um, I have read Nurnega's uh, Wash's Praise, and it was the first book that I had read that was a novel in verse. Now this is being described as an experimental debut, so I'm interested to see the use of language in this, and this is also told in alternating perspectives, which I often like if that is done well. So it will be interesting to see how this novel differs or compares to Wash's Prey. So that is the Giller Prize long list for 2022. I too want to say congratulations to all of the authors who made the long list and a huge thank you to the jury members. That's gotta be so difficult. Um, Canadian authors, Casey Plett, Kai Kello, Wabgeshig Rice, and two American authors, Katie Kitamura and Scott Spencer. Um, that's got to be hard work in narrowing, narrowing down the long list to these 14 Canadian gems. So I think that there will be some really good reading ahead. I hope to read at least a few of these before the shortlist is announced, um, and the announcement for that will be on September the 27th. It's not a lot of time, really, but we will see what I can get read. Um, I will do a shortlist prediction probably the week before, and we'll see if I get any of those correct. And then the plan is to have all of the shortlist read before um, the winner is announced on November the 7th. So I am also part of the jury for The Shadow Giller. Um, that's along with Lindy from Lindy's Magpie Reads and Penny from Literary Hoarders. And I will leave links below so you can find both of them. And if you want to follow along, that would be great. So please let me know if you have read any of the books on the long list. Uh, which ones are your favorites? Which ones do you hope will make the short list? Do you have any surprises? Um, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure. Mm -hmm.